Hey, today we're going to take a look at how to create this very intricate sort of lace looking pattern in Adobe Illustrator. It's much easier than it looks. It's going to be a whole bunch of fun and it's going to be a lot of fun to show off to your friends and family and everyone else. Uh, if you're new around here, my name is Nathaniel Dodson. If you enjoy Illustrator tutorials, hit the subscribe button and also hit the notification bell because as we've learned uh, recently in YouTube, man, a subscribe button doesn't really do much of anything. Today we've got a sponsor. It's my good friends over at Squarespace. We love them a lot. They support this channel. They support what we do. Uh, so if you're looking to build a new website or finally get your e-commerce store up and running, use the link in the bio and the coupon code TUTVID to start your website and get 10% off. I love them. You're going to love them. Thanks for the support, Squarespace. Let's jump into Illustrator right now and get this thing started. Ah, uh, yes, here we are in the friendly confines of Illustrator. We'll go file new to create a new document here. I'm just going to go with a 2000 by 2000 pixel document. For this type of effect, I like to use a square document. You can do it on anything, but I just prefer square for something like this. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so we can see what's going on. I'm also going to hit the fly out menu for my layers panel. Go panel options, make my thumbnails a little bit larger there so we can see what's going on. All right, we are going to grab the line tool first. Hold down shift and just drag a line straight up and down and hold down shift and drag a line straight across. Then grab your black selection arrow, grab both of those lines, and we're going to hit the align options that align horizontally and vertically to our document here. And then I'm going to go edit copy. I'll create a new layer, and I'm going to lock up my bottom layer just for a second. Go edit paste in front to paste these exact lines right in place, and just shut that layer two off. Let's actually name layer one guides. I'm going to unlock this layer. We're going to select it by hitting the little circle icon there, and go effect distort and transform, and choose transform. Now what we want to do is we want to divide a pie in the middle of our document that has 32 slices. So let's say uh, 360 degrees for an angle, but divided by 32 pie slices is 11.25 degrees. Uh, I'm going to say, yeah, let me uh, preview this. What we're going to do is just have our original lines tilted off axis, 11.25 degrees. So we need to make some copies. Let's use the up arrow key and just keep hitting up until we have all the copies we need. That's seven copies. You may be saying, why seven copies? Well, it has to do with the fact that uh, each of these plus or crosshairs that we have, the set of guides or lines, I should say, that we created, it's actually four pieces of the pie. Four divided by 32 is eight. One set of four is already on the artboard. That leaves us with seven copies that need to be made. Yeah, yeah I don't know if there's a better way to explain it. It's just a little complex. But if you think about it for a minute, it does make sense. Let's hit OK and move on with things. We'll come up here to Object and say, hey, expand the appearance of this whole transform starburst pie slice effect. That's going to make it all actual uh, strokes and not just a live effect that's being applied. This is going to be very important later on. These guides are, you can go view and make sure your smart guides are turned on. That's going to be essential in just a minute here. Now, before I deselect these guides, uh, let's go ahead and just make them, I don't know, let's make them a bright green color, something like that, just to differentiate them easily from what we're about to do. All right, let's turn on that layer to the top layer, the artwork layer. You can see the black lines that we've created. I'm going to zoom in here, and we're going to grab the brush tool. You can double-click your brush tool. You can see I've got my fidelity set to just the smoothest of smooth, and all the other options shut off. I'm going to hit OK. Here in the brush panel, you can select the custom brush. You can load some custom brushes, which we will do later. Uh, but for now, I'm going to stick with just a, a tall, a, a tall. I meant to say tiny, but I was thinking small, hence tall. I'm going to just stick with my tiny, small brush, and we're going to paint just some kind of line across, maybe I'll make it a bump, something like that, a bump across there. Now I do want to make sure that my uh, stroke here is set to black just to really differentiate what we're doing. So I'm actually going to undo my stroke and I'm going to say, yeah, just make that black and let's go ahead and just paint that line across there. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Now I'm painting the line there because this one slice of pie, this one 32nd of our entire circular pattern here, that is sort of our master key slice. That's the most important slice. Let's select the whole layer by hitting the little circle icon, go effect, transform again. This time I'm going to set the angle to zero. I'm going to reflect X. I'm going to say preview. And uh, we don't want seven copies. We just want one copy. And it's going to create this little rather innocuous looking thing. We're going to go ahead and hit OK. And with the whole layer selected, once more, we're going to go effect transform. Now, notice I hit transform, not apply transform. And Illustrator is going to say, look, you're going to apply another instance of the effect. You OK with that? Yes, I am. Let's apply the new effect. All right. 
Now to keep things simple, we're just going to divide the 360 by, in this case, 16. That's 22.5. You can figure out why that works on its own. I'll give you a hint. It's because we're working with two slices of the pie at a time. Uh, and I'm not going to reflect X. And here I'm going to set copies. Well, let's preview it first and foremost. You can see the little thing is going to start moving its way around. Let's just hit the up arrow key and bump in as many copies as we need. There we go, 15 copies. It's 16 altogether, but we already have one, of course. Hit OK. And there we go. We have that first effect. Uh, for our intricate pattern shape. Now, this doesn't look very good yet because we haven't um, constrained it to stick within its own little master cell. Remember that one slice of the pie. We're going to do that by creating a clipping mask. Let's open up layer two here. Let's grab our pen tool. And uh, well, I'm going to deselect everything. So select, deselect everything. This is where it's a very important view smart guide. You really, really, really want that turned on right here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's take a quick break and show our sponsor today some love. That would be Squarespace. I've had my own personal photography site with Squarespace. Space for years. It's awesome. It's easy to edit, easy to update. It's mobile friendly, so your website's going to look perfect on your phone, your friend's phone, your potential client's phone, and we're all on our phones all the time these days. They've got amazing templates you can choose from to start your website. They've got a great email campaign tool to market your website, and they make building an online store incredibly easy so you can sell the stuff you make. And isn't that what we all want to do? Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash tutvid to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, thank Thank you, Squarespace. We appreciate your support. Now let's get back to Illustrator and finish off this effect. We're going to hover over the middle of our document, and I'm going to wait until the word intersect appears. I'm going to click that. I'm going to move all the way out here, something like that, and it's going to align me exactly with my path. I'm going to bring this over this way and join it up with the path there, and then bring this back to the middle and seal the path off. Now look at what happened here. Our transform effect that's doing all this rotating, it's rotating. Look, we only created one slice of the pie, but this slice of the pie is being duplicated 31 times and spun perfectly around the center point of our document. Now this next step is really important. We're going to create a clipping mask. You may be tempted to say, hey, select the whole layer and that top layer will end up making a clipping group out of this when we go, of course, object, clipping mask, make. And it's going to trim everything and make it look really nice, makes it look really clean. But what happens when we want to build out this effect and we want to make this look more interesting? Well, we grab the brush tool, of course, and you say, well, go ahead and paint away on that layer. The transform effect is still there, but you can see that we're going to get a really rough rotten looking effect uh, because, well, it's not masked. Only the stuff within that clipping group is masked. So what's going on here? Well, long story short, what's happening is we're just creating a, a simple clipping group under the layer instead of just using this layer to clip everything that's made on layer two here. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to grab the selection tool here, deselect everything, and make sure we just select layer two in the layers panel, right? Don't select the contents of the layer, just the layer. And we are going to hit the little make clipping mask icon right here. And it's going to use that top piece of artwork. And you can see we don't have that clipping group, right? And now check this out. We can come into here and say, uh, well, let me uh, grab my brush tool here. Let's let's load in some brushes. I'm going to go to open the brush uh, brush library here. I'm going to say these lino cut brushes. Uh, there we go. We've got some more interesting brushes here. And uh, I'm going to move down a little bit. And uh, let's take this really complex brush here. And uh, let's go ahead and paint something here. Well, look at that. It all is automatically masked, just like that. Uh, let's load another set of brushes in here. Let's go with the ornate pattern brushes. Here these are. Let's take one of these more ornate patterns, and let's pull this across here. Well, look at that. It just all goes right into place, just kind of like it should. And of course, then we can still go back to our original brush, and, uh, well, this isn't our original brush, this is a different one, but I can make something like a big circle around uh, the entire interior part. I'm going to set this back to pressure, a variation of 15 points to give me some, uh, some shape here. I'm using a tablet, so the harder I press, the, more, the closer to 15 points our brush will become. The lighter I press, well, the, the, the smaller the stroke will be. I'm just going to say leave strokes here. I'm going to hit OK. And what we'll do is we'll try doing something like that where we make a big shape like that interesting and then bring it down sort of like that and maybe we'll take a really small shape like that man it's not quite gonna work for me let me try doing something kind of like that that's closer to what I'm looking for but I need to line it up correctly yeah the beauty of this is you can undo as many times as you like and get it just perfect so I'm gonna try this I'm just gonna try it until I get it there we go something like that uh, and I can use my square bracket keys to make my brush smaller and I can come in here and say like I want to put some lines across here right like that and then maybe I want to come right through here with one more line that way and you can just you can go through and you can do all sorts of really really interesting things 
and you can do them quickly. Like I can, I can just, you know, click a single time to add a dot there to the middle. You know, another dot down here, maybe a big dot and a little dot right next to that big dot and another little dot right next to that dot. You can, you can just do a lot of really, really neat things. Oh, I got the wrong, wrong area there. And uh, we could come up here and say, you know what? I want to put a big dot. I want to put a big dot right there. Something like that. It's going to be a, a mal shapen big dot, but you know, big dot nonetheless. I'll come right through here, add another big shape. I can bring it back from the other side as well. Line it up just like that and then come back from this side. And just continue building the effect and building the effect until you get something that you like. Whoop, I don't quite want to go that way. Maybe go that way. Add a little bit more of a curve to it, something like that. And you, you know, just have as much fun as you want. You can make like a little half circle here and that'll do that. A little half circle over here on this side and that'll do that. And the point is, you can just build it out and build it as big as you want. Use all the different brushes you want. Different brushes do all sorts of different things. You can take this really interesting little pattern here and paint that around and say, you know what, I actually want to add some of that pattern into there as well. Maybe add some of that pattern down into there. And just really, really quickly and almost effortlessly, you can build out really, really interesting, really complex looking patterns that, oh, by the way, are also fully vector. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here and you can see what kind of pattern we have built out. And at this point, it's really just up to you. How much time do you want to spend on it? Or do you want to find an image of a Persian rug and do your best to copy that and really take your time and really make it look nice, mix up your brushes or create your own set of brushes that really emulate exactly what it is you're going for? Well, there you have it. That is how we do that. You can see it's really kind of a cool little method to go in and uh, create this very intricate spinning pattern, add some brushes of your own, add your own technique, add your own artistic vision, and you're going to come up with some really amazing stuff. And speaking of come up, coming up with amazing things, I would love to see what you make. Upload it to Instagram. Tag me in the image. Like actually at the press and tag me in the image, not just in the caption because that stuff disappears, sadly. And uh, I don't get to see it all. But if you tag me in the image, I will 100% see it. And I would love to see what you come up with and show you some love. Give you a like, give you a comment, you know, all that kind of fun stuff. So for messing with the brush tool and the transform effect, a few transform effects, in fact, the clipping mask and everything else we covered today in this Illustrator tutorial, ladies and gentlemen, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.